Following the release of his 2018 record Astro World, Travis Scott truly reached another level of superstardom. The album would be highly praised, nominated for numerous Grammys, and even inspired Travis to create a festival under the same title. Listeners were on the edge of their seats wondering what direction Travis would take with his next album, soon to be announced as Utopia. Ironically, while Astroworld took Travis to the highest of highs, it would tie him up in the root of controversy in late 2021. The third annual Astroworld Festival would be an utter disaster with a lack of proper staffing and numerous lives lost. With the event set to kick off the release of Utopia, the travesty would derail Travis's plans for his upcoming album's release. Five months removed from the event, the rollout seems to be starting up again, as billboards promoting the project have been seen in California. With the album's pre-release timeline being littered in controversy, cancel culture, and delays, many have forgotten the events and details fans received about Utopia in the first half of 2021. So today, we are going to list and look back on all of those details and see what fans can expect from Travis Scott's upcoming album, Utopia. Following the release of Astro World, Travis Scott would drop a few singles along with a joint project titled Jack Boys in 2019. The first sign of any new music that fans got was from a Kendall and Kylie advertisement. White clouds blowing out when we max four five, not the size, but it kick up. On June 20th of 2020, an unreleased Travis Scott song would be featured in an ad for the brand that fans would call Vision. Previously, Travis had the Highest in the Room remix on one of the Kendall and Kylie ads before it officially released along with that Jack Boys project. So that led many fans to believe that this Vision track would officially release somewhere down the line or maybe even on Travis's upcoming album that we didn't really know about yet. On July 8th, Travis would post a picture of himself in a futuristic, dystopian-looking outfit with the caption, Utopia. The following month, on the two-year anniversary of Astroworld's release, Travis would post a picture of a handwritten letter, and on the letter, the final word, the final sentence, would say, See you in Utopia. In late July, Travis would preview a track featuring Young Thug and M.I.A. called White T on Chase B's Wave Radio. This track would officially be released in September on streaming platforms under the title Franchise. As more work was done in the studio, Travis would share his excitement on social media, tweeting about Utopia and soon changing his Instagram bio to signal the influx of a new era. I mentioned Travis previewing Franchise months before it released on Wave Radio and he would do the same thing for two more tracks in October. Both have yet to be officially released, but the first one is titled Blunt Talk, featuring Bryson Tiller, and I guess this was originally made with the intentions that it would be Tiller's track. The other track was Niagara Falls, featuring 21 Savage. Again, yet to be released, but this track actually would be leaked. We're going to talk about that in a second. In the latter half of 2020, Travis would hold studio sessions in Mexico, being seen working with the likes of Don Tolliver, Wheezy, Hitboy, and Roddy Rich. In January of 2021, fans would actually get to hear two unreleased Travis Scott songs through Spotify. Travis's account was hacked and two tracks were uploaded. The tracks Vision and Niagara Falls would be leaked. And while at the time people expected these tracks to end up on Utopia, these tracks just sound older and definitely don't uh, really coincide with the expected vibe of Utopia that Travis would uh, talk about in a few interviews when he was describing his creative process for this album. In May, Travis would participate in an interview with NME, describing the direction of his new music and talking about expanding his signature sound when rapping on new beats he had just created. In June, he would elaborate further on this, speaking with WWD, saying, I'm in this new album mode where it's like psychedelic rock. And we would hear some tracks that matched up with that psychedelic rock sound during the summer 2022 Cactus Jack Dior collab show. 
As models walk down the western themed runway, eerie Pink Floyd-esque tracks would be the score for the event. While most would just be spacey instrumentals, two tracks would have lyrics and seem close to finished. The first one was Lost Forever, featuring West Side Gun and James Blake. And it has an instrumental that is heavily inspired by the British TV show titled Utopia. The other track was Escape Plan, and while this doesn't exactly vibe with the psychedelic sound Travis was describing, it's more like a franchise in my opinion, it's still a banger. And on July 24th, at Rolling Loud, Travis would perform Escape Plan. In August, Travis would tease Utopia being more than just music, saying life is a movie, so is this album, and mentioning film and media. As the fall began, rumors of a prelude to Utopia, a dystopia mixtape, would start surfacing around on the internet, kind of a days before rodeo rodeo situation. The rumor would spark from a pretty reliable leaker on thin ice who has gotten a lot of obscure things right about big artists such as Kanye West. On October 7th, Travis would post a Instagram story of Mike Dean working in the studio, potentially mixing. And it is in the fall that Travis would really focus on promoting the third annual Astroworld Festival. Of course, in 2020, the festival had to be canceled, so for the event to return, it was a pretty big deal. Midnight before the event on November 5th, Travis would drop two new tracks, those being Escape Plan and Mafia, featuring J. Cole. The cover art for the two-song release package would be Travis as Bat Boy, with the headline of the paper reading, The True Dystopia Is Here. When the end arrives, it's really the beginning. At the Astroworld Festival itself, many creative and different things would be present for fans to experience and kind of give a little bit of a look into what we can expect from Utopia's concept. Welcome to Utopia. You are entering a place where no being has ever existed before. This is a new thing, and there's nothing like this in all the universe. We create a new world where everything is for everyone. Utopia is everywhere. Utopia is all time. Oh. The art on the stage, as well as featured on the merchandise, would also fit the vibe of Utopia with the tagline, See You on the Other Side. Purely looking at the music side of things, Travis's performance at the Astroworld Festival was phenomenal. He would perform the two new tracks, Mafia and Escape Plan, along with the unreleased Lost Forever. But aside from the music, the event itself, especially during Travis's performance, would be an utter disaster with a lack of proper medical staff, as well as incompetent police from videos that I've seen. Travis would stop his performance three to four times while on stage, calling over for EMTs to come and help fans he saw in the crowd suffering or having a seizure, but there's only so much that someone can do when on stage. Allegedly, no one told Travis that anyone had passed away during his performance, so when news of him going straight to a party after the festival hit the internet, he received tons of backlash. The event, and I cannot emphasize this enough, was an utter tragedy. People were trampled, lives were lost, there are victims who need to be remembered. But I have to point out some of the crazy hate that Travis Scott got. I think that no matter what, Travis bears at least some responsibility for what happened at the festival. It's his event. However, he was not responsible for staffing or organizing the event. That responsibility would lie on Live Nation, aka the company that owns Ticketmaster. No one would mention that. Instead, everyone would focus on the fictitious idea that Travis could actually see people dying, laying on the ground and suffering in a sea of tens of thousands of people while on stage on an elevated platform. They would also fail to mention that Travis did stop the show on numerous occasions on the very few instances that he did see fans suffering. There's a very valid argument that Travis should have stopped the show completely and walked off, but I think that argument is disregarding the amazing amount of pressure Travis had to be under main eventing your festival under your name, and also the possibility of a riot happening if he was to just stop performing and leave the fans who stood there to see him for hours in heat high and dry. 
All in all, I really don't think this event was as black and white as many people paint it as. To call Travis Scott a murderer, in my opinion, is absolutely outrageous. And even more ridiculous is these conspiracy theorists who are claiming Travis Scott is some Satan worshiper who enjoys seeing his fans suffer. Aside from all the debate, I think the most important thing for everyone to consider is that lives were seriously lost. This is a serious thing. It happened and we need to not only learn from it, but also give grace and show support to the families who lost loved ones. And I would 100% expect Travis to have some sort of lyric or dedication to those who lost their lives at the event on Utopia. Since the event, Travis has shown his remorse starting up the Heal Project along with attempting to pay for every one of the victim's funerals. After the tragedy, Travis would obviously remain silent as he was slammed by nearly every major media outlet, but he would eventually return to social media and break his silence on December 31st. As 2022 began, Travis would be active in the studio collaborating with Kanye West as Ye was working on his upcoming record, Donda 2. Travis would give Ye many beats for the album and even be featured on the track Pablo. In the music world, silence means that work is being done, and Travis has been very quiet as of late. Aside from a few public appearances and a few Instagram posts, there really has been no news about Utopia, any upcoming music, nothing. On April 9th, numerous billboards promoting Utopia would be spotted in California. The billboards in order read, Ps, looking for Utopia? Wrong way leading some to believe that this is actually promotion for the Dystopia mixtape. Supporting this theory is Travis's activity of dropping records. All three of his studio albums have released in the latter half of their respective years. Utopia is a term used to describe a perfect world. However, before you reach a perfect universe, you have to face adversity before you reach utopia, you have to endure the dystopia. We don't exactly know for sure that Travis is going to drop a dystopia mixtape. Perhaps the double singles released last November were the musical representations for dystopia. But certainly on the road to releasing utopia, Travis Scott's reality has turned damn near dystopian. The world questioned his morality, people canceled him, Many wrote him off following the Astroworld Festival incident. I cannot emphasize how important it is that Travis knocks it out of the park with these upcoming musical releases post Astroworld Festival. It'll be interesting to see how he addresses the victims in his lyrics, and in a more fun sense, how he evolves his sound from Astroworld. I for one cannot wait for Travis to take on a psychedelic rock sound. In Mike Dean guitar solos, Mike Dean on the synths, along with Travis Scott doing his own drums, that is a combo sure to create a kick-ass record. With Utopia on the way, I'll see you on the other side.